Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we're at Formnext in Germany. We're taking a look at some of the latest and greatest tech in 3D printing. We're talking with some new partners, some old partners, and we're gonna chop this up into lots of different videos so that we can try to cover as much as humanly possible. But, first of all, let's play a game of jacket, no jacket, because sometimes I'm gonna be hot and sometimes I'm not, and it's gonna make it really difficult from an editing perspective. <laughs> let's get in there. Hello guys, we are at the Frozen booth. Yep. And it's the Arco and it's real. And it's here. <laughs> I'm with the CEO. This is how important this interview is. I'm with the CEO yeah. of Frozen. <laughs> and here we are talking about Arco. So talk me through the journey that you've been on to get to here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, hello everyone. This is Frozen. I'm Ray from Frozen, and uh, now this is our first prototype of our FDM printer called Arco. Actually, in the past, we focused more a lot of our resources in the Racing 3D printer. But uh, you know, Racing 3D printer has its limit. For example, size, material selections. So our our users keep asking asking us, can we do something that can expand our portfolio, help them finish more jobs? So that's why we think about, oh, FDN. You know, FDN in the past last year, it's uh, very popular, especially for high-speed printing, multi-color. And uh, when, when we saw that, we think mm, maybe we, it's time to catch up with that. So we, we, we found our first Arco, which is a fast 3D printing, 3D, fast FDN printer with the 30 centimeters length, wide, and height. And uh, we, well, we do three improvements compared to current existing portfolio. First of all, we make it print even a little bit faster than the current offerings by, uh, by doing some mechanical designs. We lower our systems downward in the bottom, and also we make the printing moving core XY. That is, we, the table is in the bottom, and the nozzle will move down to the bottom. So like a racing car, we put the center of the gravity lower, and then the vibration will be the impact of the vibration will be less, so we can print a higher printing speed. So like we can get a six six hundred in the speed and also acceleration rate to up to thirty thousand, yes, which is about thirty percent higher than current offerings. And also we also we have a, we we also invest invested in the software development. So we got our own slicer, which make which lead us to make a multi color printing. And then last but not least, we improve the nozzles yeah, by doing some thermal, man thermal, de thermal management design. Uh, we, we make the thermal dissipation better and then so that the in during the printing we can, we can lower the distance of, of, of the heating end and the extruder end by up to, from 30 millimeters to 10 millimeters so that we can extrude different materials fast. Now you can only print the other, for the other current offerings. You can only print the uh, PLA in the high speed. But for us, we can print out not only PLA but PTG and also TPU at the high speed. So there's a lot to unpack there, right? Yep. So first and foremost, uh, you know, we're dealing with as you said, we've got a fixed bed, a movable Z, uh, which is the whole carriage, which is you know very which is moving away from how a number of core XYs have gone, yeah. but it is the way that something like a Voron 2.4 would work, um, some, something, in that, something in those sort of terms. Yeah. So rather than the bed going down, you have the center of gravity nice and low, and the, yeah. and the, uh, and the nozzle is what goes up. A variable heat zone. So the problem you have with materials like TPU is that as soon as they melt, they are a very, very malleable elastopolymer. Yeah. So, um, so trying to force that is very yeah. much like trying to put a marshmallow through a hula hoop. Like yeah. it's really difficult to get any pressure behind it because it wants to just spread out rather yeah. than go where you want it to. So that's gonna mean that you can print TPU much faster as well yeah. as have greater control over engineering grade materials. Yeah. 
you're dealing with your I mean so everything in this is ultimately we're not we're not reusing a lot of other stuff so yeah. when you do when you see a lot of companies come into a new space yeah. they will effectively get somebody else's design and they'll rebrand it and then yeah. make it this yeah. but what we're talking about here is proprietary you you've built this from the ground up yeah. right Yes. So you've got your own slicer in the works, yes. you've got your, you know, you've done your own kinematic system, you've done everything in here is, is yes. designed, tested, and, and run by, by yes. you guys. Okay. We also then have a multi-material system. So the only multi-material system that is similar to this is the AMS that comes with the Bamboo Labs. Yes. Um, however, there are other multi-material systems you can get. All of them have different drawbacks and different flaws. You had the multi-material system from yeah. Prusa, you have the enraged rabbit, which is basically a kit. Um, this is obviously a more refined version, and we are working with four colors here. So is the plan to mean that you can connect multiples of these to a single machine? Yes. So that you can, if you want to, eight colors, 12 colors. Yes, yes. Hey, very cool. Lots and lots of things. So we have got some example prints. Something to bear in mind is that this is a prototype. So this yeah. is the first time this is being shown and these are the first prints that are coming out of it at the moment. Um, as a result, the slicer is still in the works, the slicer is still being developed, the engineering is yeah. still being developed, the motion system is still being developed, the heat system is still being developed. So all of that stuff needs to be bear in mind when you take a look at the prints. But if we take a look at something like this yeah. uh, jug, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then you can, we can all zoom in. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Mike was just looking through the catalogue. <laughs> So you can see the surface quality on this is really, yeah. really clean. Is this printed with this is printed with no supports at all, right? Yep. Yeah, so no all of the yeah. overhangs on here are really clean. Like that is astonishingly good. It's a very, very clean first layer. Yeah. There is no stepping, there's no artifacts, there's no part cooling, bridging is done fantastically. Like mm. even for a machine that we're classing as a prototype, this yeah. is better than an awful lot yeah. of retail machines. Yeah. We do also then have this little guy. So this is some of the first uh, multicolor prints that you guys yeah. have done. So this still has a purge tower. Yeah. So it's not um, so it's not like uh, the mosaic, for example. So mosaic yeah. machines splice and cut the material down to yeah. try and get rid of the purge tower. So we're still dealing with a purge tower with this, yeah. but we don't have the machine randomly throwing out material at the back of it for no real reason. Yes. Um, not saying any particular brands, but there are brands that do it, and that's super weird. Um, but we have got, this is a point to uh, layer height, and it's not bad. I mean, th there is some tune-in to do, but the colors are clean. Yeah. Like, there, there are crisp lines between these. There's a little bit of surface quality that needs to be refined, but... I mean, that is, as a prototype machine, yeah. that's a great first start. And, and we are still optimizing it. So uh, when, uh, when uh, mass production is finished, actually the print quality will be better. So I, yeah. people are going to obviously ask, what are we looking at regarding timelines for retail? So uh, there's yeah. obviously an R&D process that yeah. needs to go on so that what you're producing is the same quality as the machines you produce yeah. in resin. So what are you targeting to get this out to people? Uh, actually, we will announce more details uh, later in December, and maybe we will run a Kickstarter campaign. After all, this is our first FDM printer to the market. Yep. Yep, so we will announce a Kickstarter campaign at the end of the December, and then, uh, and then the mass production will be roughly like uh, in March. Right. Yeah, in March, and then we'll start shipping out in the, maybe in end of March, that you will, arrive, you will get it in May or in June. Yeah. June of next year. That is not long. Not yeah. really. Not when you consider. You all right? <laughs> not when you consider everything that we're still going through at this point, because you're still 
you're still refining the machine, yeah. you're still refining the software and the slicer, yeah. and then you still have to mass produce them <laughs> and yeah. get them out. So that's a really short amount of time to be able yeah. to get to where you need to be. But, but, but in the past, we already invested two years in this unit. Right, yeah. okay. So, we, so although it's a prototype, it's, yeah, pro so. it's a prototype that you are already confident about yes. rather than just yes. being a new thing that you came up with before the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we are a little bit nervous. Yeah, it's the first time, you know. <laughs> okay, so let's look at what else you've got because you've also got the 8KS, the Mega 8KS yes. here, and we've got the new material Onyx here as well that we want to have a conversation about. Yep. Right, okay, so two things we want to talk about here. So first of all is the Mega 8KS. So we've got a refresh that's happened on the regular Mega, Mega 8K, 8K, if we want yeah. to call it that. Um, and this is effectively shorter. shorter. We've now got an up and over hood rather than yeah. the doors. And we have the Mega 8KS. So yeah. the S is the new line of, of, uh, of your machines that are coming out, looking to try and bring down the price, make yeah. them more accessible, make them more affordable. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about you're not just compromising a little bit of Z height yeah. because you're also getting a refined new machine, right? Yeah. This isn't just about cutting price, this yeah. is cutting time. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so let me, let me introduce uh, Mega S. Uh, in the past, we, everyone know we got a Sony Mega, right? Uh, in the Sony Mega, we got uh, about 10, over 10,000 users using the Mega. It's a verified, when people talking about big print, they always come with the failure. But for, but for our mega, we are already verified by over 10, over 10,000 users. So, but a lot of users says, uh, says, oh, okay, 40 centimeters, apparently too much for me. I just want to do small part production. Oh, production? Oh, I got it. Production means you need uh, efficiency. So we think about, we take this feedback and think about, rethink about it. So for Sony Mega S, we reduce the height a little bit by 10 centimeters, try, try to, and try to, uh, how to say, maintain its stability of the printing, and then we do two improvements. First of all, we change our main board. We, we upgraded our main board so that for these new units, you can not only print the big parts, but you can print the multiple, part, multiple parts at uh, one time using our new system, which can help you uh, print fast. For example, uh, for our, uh, on, our, on, our, on our war back, backwards, we show that we can print 900 layers per hour, which means three to four seconds per layer. That is the upgrade from our main board. Yeah, that is the first benefit for the Sony Mega S. And the second thing is that we make the automation for this printer. Yeah, for example, yeah, we get, we get, we get the, mo uh, the most important thing is the auto filling system. This printer uh, is compatible with auto filling system. For large print, you always count. You uh, it takes a lot of raisins, right? But apparently, for this vat, you cannot. You cannot. Uh, you you need to. You cannot put all the raisin inside the inside yep. the printer. You need to count back every one or two hours. See, hey, do you have a raisins? That's not for production. For production, you need to have the auto filling functions. So we have additional. Auto, auto fillers that is compatible with this printer. It can help you to, it is integrated with the printing process and you can fill the raisins every, whenever you are running out of the raisin. So you don't need to come back. You just wait till your printing finished. Yeah, with these two features, actually we can fulfill our users to make the, using the Mega AKS for the small part, mass, mass, massive, uh, small and uh, multiple parts productions at the same time. Right, yeah. and speaking of resins, we have new resins here. Yeah. So we've got the Onyx Pro 410. So yeah. this was partnered with Henkel, yeah. and it is an engineering grade yeah. resin. So high impact resistance. Uh, yeah, you can try to throw the ball. I could, what, on yeah. the floor. On the floor. You heard I him say. It nice. didn't break. It can break, it's very strong. We also print the hammer. Actually, we can use it to hammer and to nail the nails. And in another show, actually, we That's nails cool. 100 nails, steel, steel, standard steel nails at the show, and without any That's damage cool. on this hammer. And then we yeah. have so then we have Onyx Impact Plus resin. So that's been developed with Loctite. So yep. is that these guys? Uh, this guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So these are high engineer again a high yeah. under, high engineering grade yeah, materials. Yeah, with the mechanical strength. Yeah, yeah. high mechanical strength. One. So these are bendable, resilient material, 
and they're unbreakable with super yeah. shock resistance. That yes. is a bold statement. So, yeah. <laughs> so we're saying that yeah. you can't. I mean, yeah, I suppose that's. Uh, yeah. I mean, they've glued them down with Loctite, but uh, <laughs> but, uh, but we're but we're dealing with again high impact resistance yeah. and engineering one grade is materials. Rigid and one is high impact resistance. And then we have what is this? Oh, and then, this is a rubber-like material. It's our new material called E400. And it is uh, uh, typically using uh, for the elasto elastic uh, uh, rubber-like material. Yeah. The tear strength is not so good. This one is the highest tear strength we have. But please don't tear it apart. It still can be tear apart. But no, it is. so this one isn't break in break uh, isn't unbreakable. Uh, yeah. But it is incredibly flexible. Like this is yeah. this is very very flexible. So normally, if you're dealing with especially once you start dealing with elasto polymers and resin. There's a lot of chemical science that goes into it. They are really difficult to print. Yeah. Um, they're incredibly difficult to print, especially with resin, because yeah. elastopolymers like to bond together. So trying to have supports that are removable in these, really, really hard yeah. to get them to a point where it cures enough where they can actually break away. Yeah. And then we've got even, and once we start stacking the layers and yeah. stacking the materials, we've got really quite strong but yeah. still flexible and compressible material. This is the kind of stuff I'd expect to see yeah. on like a bike seat or yeah. something like that. So really, really cool with yeah. that. And then lastly, you've got the BASF okay. ceramic uh, materials. Ceramic materials. So these are, I'm going to just read it because I don't know what these words really mean. So a high stiffness with E modules up to 5,800 MPA yeah. and it's 50% ceramic content for an authentic ceramic like yeah. finish. So, so the finish on these is really, really amazing. Not like plastic, right? Yeah, yeah, it's incredibly. So I know that we say that resin printing is very smooth and it is, but this feels like China. This mm. feels like, this yeah. feels like, this feels like a plate, like it's so fine. Yes, and also in the meantime, it's a very rigid material with a very high flexural strength. Yeah. So it won't, it won't deform easily. So how sandable is that? Because ceramic is very sandable. So if you, if you try to sand this back, will it, will it sand it just nicely? Just use a typical way to sand it, it's okay. Yeah. So if you were doing cosplay, is specifically what I'm thinking, um, then you would be able to use enamel paints, mm. which would give you a very, very high quality finish. Yeah. Um, and these parts are absolutely gorgeous. I know that we have, you know, I know we always get high quality when we're dealing yeah. with resin parts, but these also then have a high level of mechanical strength as well yeah. as being a high level of detail. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Thank you very much for taking the time. No problem. Catch yeah. you on the next one.